began in the fall of 2012 while surfing one night. I came across this website, which was a video clip from a fellow named Dog's Life, who had participated in the Everglades Challenge 2011. I was impressed very much with uh, the effort that he put into accomplishing this, and it piqued me to look into more on the event itself. What I found with some research was that the Everglades Challenge is something that takes place every year through the sponsorship of a group called Water Tribe. The event itself is a voyage between Fort DeSoto and Tampa Bay and Key Largo that spans a distance of about 300 miles and occupies much of its course in Everglades National Park, hence the name. There are six classes of boats that participate in this event. Um, of these, I chose the Hobie Adventure Island. I'd owned this vessel once before uh, in a red color, but it had all sorts of problems in the first edition with its rudder and steering system, which prompted me to sell the boat after a year and a half. They appeared to have since fixed that problem, and uh, as a consequence, I went ahead and bought this boat for preparation for the challenge. I chose for a primary training route a circuitous circumnavigation of uh, Key Biscayne, which is fairly close by and makes a good 16-mile loop. In order to personalize the boat, I designed a haka bench for the starboard side ama, uh, intending to use a trampoline on the port side ama. This enabled me to store gear on the starboard and port sides while still have access to a paddling space on the port side and a pulling space if need be. This is the final product of the homemade haka bench made out of teak wood, stained and fit lovingly to the starboard side haka arms coming off to support the starboard side ama. This was my wardrobe for the first training circumnavigation around Key Biscayne. Uh, I found an old flight suit and a big floppy hat which is not visible in the picture along with a uh, proper PFD. This all provided good coverage except for one vital part of the human anatomy, which I should know better being a podiatrist. You'll notice that uh, my feet were left somewhat unshod. And in consequence, I learned a valuable lesson about sunblocking the human foot. From this point on, I was always sure to have plenty of sunblock on board. One of the great things about the Water Tribe program is an incentive to get ready for the events by participating in what's called the Derby. The Derby allows one that's enrolled in an upcoming event to uh, participate in training exercises and, and have a, a way of tracking and getting credit for them in the course of preparing for a challenge. On subsequent trips, I dressed a little more carefully to protect from the sun. Uh, unfortunately, the audio did not pick up on my GoPro because it was covered with a waterproof casing. However, this is pretty much how the boat looked as it was set up on the beach off Hoey Beach in Key Biscayne. So here we are off on another training circumnavigation around uh, Key Biscayne. You'll notice the tramp on the left side and you get a little glimpse of the haka bench on the right side. Uh, the combination worked very well in terms of uh, mobility and facility. Notice on this day the wind is good enough that I'm really not using the pedals too much on this point of sail because it's a circumnavigation I had a chance to practice all points of sail. Okay, again, here I am on Dorsalis. Uh, we are passing off the east side of Deepest Cane. It's a beautiful day out. I've got a decent point of sail right now. It had been better before. It was in the northeast. It's about to get to the east, but still good. I'm making about five to six knots. You can see the island over off the starboard side. And the telltales, which are pretty much pointing uh, in the direction of uh, southeast, but that's with the true wind, not with that wind. Um, I'm seemingly delivered from the white water because of the uh, offshore reefs that are breaking it up. Fairly decent water here. Um, it's a super day to be out training for the Everglades Challenge, and I look forward to completing today and to going on a bit further. To the okay, went through a bad stretch back there, hit some white water, 
came about as close as I've ever come to being swamped, but I came through it okay. Lesson is when you've got a beam C turn into the white water. Up and down. Here we are back at Hobie Beach at the end of the day, looking out from the boat over the setting sun to the west, noticing a few little fixits, uh, one of which being a cotter pin, um, and some other people uh, playing on the beach, a uh, man with his dog, which sort of set the mood for a pretty end to this day. Okay, so not all the preparation for Everglades Challenge can be on the water. There's got to be a way to work on staying in shape over the course of the week when us mere mortals have to do things like work. And so this is my solution to preparation. This is a cat trike expedition purchased from Utah Trikes. It's got a little a few extra special things like a planetary gear in the system and a schlump high speed derailleur on the front. You notice also that it's mounted on a uh, rail in the back so that I can use it here at home. Uh, in fact, it'd be really kind of semi-lazy. Set it right in front of the TV set and just watch TV while I'm pumping away. This turned out to be excellent preparation for the Mirage Drive pedaling on the uh, kayak later during the Everglades Challenge and gave me a real edge up in terms of uh, working out uh, and keeping up with the pace. However, it was not all living room athletics. Uh, this is daddy and daughter participating in critical mass at Miami and taking the trike out on uh, long distance escapades like the Natchez Trace Trail, which is a 400 mile trip between Natchez, Mississippi and Nashville, Tennessee. While triking and bicycling are good, there's no substitute for the actual on the water training. This is a trip that took place in February between uh, Flamingo and Shark Point Chicky, uh, in which I uh, uh, had an opportunity to exercise the boat in, in Everglades challenge type conditions. This is the exit from the main channel at Flamingo, heading out into Florida Bay, uh, Camp Key off in the background, uh, headed toward Tin Can Channel, wherein I would make a turn to the east and head out down towards Shark Point Chicky. Notice it started out to be a pretty nice day, but late in the day. Uh, this is about 4.35 in the afternoon. Here's the uh, entrance into Tin Can Channel with uh, your friendly neighborhood hawk resting on top of the channel marker. I thought this was kind of an interesting series and made it part of the introduction of this uh, preparation sequence. By the time I actually arrived at Shark Point, it was well after dark, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. It's spooky for the last couple miles, but in the end, again, excellent training for the Everglades Challenge, which would involve a lot of night travel use of navigational lights. Arrived here off Shark Point at a gorgeous chicky and uh, pitch camp. This was the vista that greeted me on rising the next morning. Note the dead calm over Florida Bay. It's hard to tell where the sky ends and the earth begins. Very pretty way to wake up in the morning after a chilly night. Here is another clip of uh, the Chicky with a Hennessy hammock slung, which made for a relatively comfortable night's sleep. We'll pan around here and show the uh, gorgeous morning that I was able to wake to after a chilly night's sleep. There's the boat down below tied up to the Chicky, and as we come around and look at the Chicky from the different perspectives, we can see once again where it's difficult to tell when the sky ends and when the day begins. And so we finish our preparation phase by viewing the paddle out from uh, Shark Point on Florida Bay. Notice it's a windless day. One can only see from the bow wave any movement at all of the vessel. Uh, there's also evidence of a lack of wind on the part of the telltale that can be seen on the uh, port side bow. There's a green one on the starboard side, which is not visible on this clip. And finally, the ultimate evidence that there is no wind speak of is the sail itself. One looks at the sail and sees it hanging limp and loose. Uh, it could have been furled, but uh, that didn't seem to make any uh, 
influence on my ability to move forward and out. And so we'll end this day paddling back to Flamingo headquarters of Everglades National Park. Now, just uh, two or three weeks away from the actual Everglades Challenge in the beginning and having prepared in a way that hopefully would uh, put me in good shape for the challenge itself. So we're out for now.